Thank you, Rai. Um, so I probably would have been the happiest person. So I moved from finance to data science and analytics in 2015. So one of the biggest hurdles in corporate sector to transform digitally and to data, one barrier is the leadership belief. And today when uh, Anur Kumar Desanayake talks about using data and informed decisions to build this country, I mean, that is what any analyst or a data scientist or a digital transform coach would like to hear. And I'm glad that we have a leader uh, like Anura and the team who believes in data. So today, before I start, I remember when I did my A-levels in commerce, there was a favorite question in the commerce paper. I think it's still there. It's at the end of the paper. It says, differentiate economic development and growth. I think still our people in this country does not know the meaning of economic development and growth. We have been talking about economic development and you heard earlier in the speeches both, both Dr. Harini and Anura how the inequality and it has not got distributed to continuously improve the lives of the people. So the growth has taken place but development has not take, taken place. So the today's focus in this presentation is to give you the components and the areas that we would focus in building this economy. So when we talk about a resilient economy, we know there will be internal and external shocks, man-made shocks, uh, the, the natural disasters and external shocks, but a country or economy should be able to come up fast and you know recover fast. That's what a resilient economy means. Before we get into how to build or put this on track and what are the components that we are going to use, we need to understand where are we now. We are in a bankrupt situation or near bankruptcy where our foreign trade deficit for the last few decades, it has been around $8 billion. It has not eased. The exports have, exports have not increased enough or the imports have not reduced. The fiscal deficit is going out of control. It's not sustainable. Currently, it's about 2,400 billion LKR, and that is the money that will be that should be utilized to build our corporates and businesses. And again, the foreign debt of 53 billion that we owe to the world, whether we have invested this 53 billion into a uh, uh, productive investments that could yield our GDP. And when it comes to the in income inequality, I think we discuss enough that you know there's a problem that we need to fix. And the contracting of the economy that we have, we are forecasting a contraction of about 9% uh, in the years to come. So whilst we have all of this in the back of my, our mind, I'm going to explain you the fundamentals of our economic policy. Since I was a student, or even when I was in working as a professional, we had various governments and various leaders, but we never heard of a vision. A vision, a country, where the country should head. Now, Jatika Janabala Vege, we are very clear that we are driving or thriving for sustainable development. We would be driving our resources and people to take a part or like in, integrate ourselves into the global value chain. If we can't do it, if you can't take the part of the production, if you can't be part of that value chain, we would not be able to bring those benefits to our nation. And again, we are a small nation, we might not be able to produce jobs for everyone. But 350,000 people come out of each year, so we need to create a competent human capital that we can use for our production and services in the country as well as we can win the world where our people will go outside as entrepreneurs or service providers to, be, to build this nation going forward. As we discuss along this session, it's about an inclusive uh, society, inclusive economy, that how do we try to create opportunity to people who does not have opportunity to get into the the, the economic development process. The four pillars that we would use in building our economic policy, one is about the production and production plan where we would have a 
strategic plan for the country which will be agreed with you all where should the country direct i know all the corporates here you have five year plans three year plans and again a one year plan but have as a country have you heard about it do you know where your industry should go in the next five years we have it so we need to set that up you have the knowledge we will facilitate and we will create that plan and again for us to achieve this plan we need the human capital we can't have the current education system we need to build the capacity that who can su support this production and the skills that we need in this journey and also i think this is not a thing that we should even debate it's the efficient and the effective effective government the governance has to be efficient and effective to drive the economy and that is a key pillar that we would look forward to and the international trade piece we know we can't survive on our own there's international trade and the global trade global economy is there for us to capture which we have not captured so far and the while we make these subtle changes or drastical changes we need to ensure that we take into account or oh, that the geo heritage values of sri lanka is shaping these changes because we have a culture we have a heritage and we have a location that we need to consider when you are making these changes so as uh, uh, anru kumar said that it's about the consumer as corporate Uh, people who are here who are the business leaders we all know we talk about consumer centricity consumer is there in the center and we evolve around that so as a government we are also feeling the same thing in terms of how do you bring the, these consumer demands or consumer needs and wants through a quality product and a reasonable price and a continuous supply both to the end consumer as well as our production processes and when we are doing that we need to build a efficient market we need to build a competitive market and the market has to be transparent so when we say competitiveness we need to allow people to come into businesses so that you compete when you compete only the quality and the price will improve and also the transparency as a country we don't have a transparency we don't know where the profits lie we don't know the value chain because if you talk about today's world it's about industry 4.0 we have we talk there is no barriers between the value chain and there is a transparent wall that shows everything from the raw material supply to manufacturer to supply chain to the end consumer everything is visible so transparent market is what we will drive for and again efficient market there's in enormous amount of waste in this our country we have lot of agri production which does not reach the consumer half of that get wasted and also we have inefficient transportation systems and demand supply is not based on data as anru said clearly because the data is not telling us what is the demand data is not telling us what is the supply that we would have this huge inefficiency as we try to achieve these objectives for the consumer the government will intervene in two ways one is the regulations so we will use even now we have regulation but that are that are, that are not getting executed and also organizing the market there are various ways we can organize the market we can invite the private investor to take on this is the demand we want to create please take we will support you and we can use the public ownership as we clearly said we will intervene clearly on the two areas that we would and also using cooperative structures the cooperative structures are globally well very much accepted as a very efficient mode of getting capital and also uh, redistributing the benefits of that organization and the strategic investments we might have to do a lot of strategic investments as we go along so that we might have to jointly invest we have to invest the government might have to invest because certain industries we have not touched even there are strategic investments like ports that we will have to think differently how do you organize these markets so when i said about the production plan i think there is some misconception that you know uh, 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 there can be like a plan that everybody has to stick to it no it's about what are these focus industries that we going to do every country has done it germany has done it japan has done it Uh, singapore has done it they have decided what are their competitive advantages as a country they have decided these are the five or six industries we are going to prosper 
next 10 years this is where we will put our mind time this is where we will put our head to so in terms of sri lanka we have it industry at 1.6 billion which can be taken to 3 billion apparel industries doing on their own with 5 billion which can be taken to 8 billion tourism industry we can take from 4.4 billion obviously to 8.8 .8 billion potential so we need to have a focus we can't do everything so we need to understand what is and that be that will be inculcated into a national plan that even a child that who goes to school will understand at schools we don't know if you go to if you ask a child that coming out of school what are your industries in sri lanka you will like what i don't know right because when we were young it was told tea coconut and rubber and that's it right and then the the workforce we need to create a workforce underpin we need to underpin underpin workforce for this production or services plan so the education has to get reformed the right skills and the technologies has to come into education and then we will also look at the sme sector as we clearly say sme sector will allow us to uh, distribute the wealth in more e equal way uh, equitable way into the society because as we grow the uh, sme sector which is 53 percent now if it's a developed economy it goes closer to 90 percent where the contribution of the smes and the government accountability this is something you wouldn't have heard or thought of right with jatika janabala vega uh, government we will be responsible for the industry we will be responsible for your business because if you fail we all fail if you fail we lose jobs if you fail we lose, lose our dollars that as a government we will have to be responsible has there been any minister who has been responsible that we couldn't reach the targets i have heard about the it industry going to uh, 5 billion and i have been listening to this since 2012 but there's no responsibility in the government the private sector tries on their own and corporates tries on their own but there is no accountability into the government as much as we would be responsible for the citizens we will be responsible equally responsible for all the businesses in the country because we need these businesses to succeed so when you talk about the human resource this is very important right so if you create a corporate plan a business plan then you will go to the hr uh, your hr organization and say these are the skills i want this is the critical talent these are the talent that i need to save and these are the skills that we need to build within next five years the technology uh, the, the digital literacy the numeracy these you will tell the hr team this is what you need to do so as a country all the same thing if you have a production plan you need to have a human resource plan that will deliver and then when you deliver that we need to create knowledge i don't think we have ever created knowledge we have exam system that does not create knowledge we don't inculcate entrepreneurship we don't inculcate innovation we don't create people who can ask questions and innovate so the knowledge is from university system to school systems we have to ensure that the knowledge is ability to build and the skills and the attitudes there are we are very conservative nation that we don't want to take risk to do business also and then the skills from the people in terms of digital literacy and language skills like english we need to have those skills as we go on and we have to create a global citizen we can't look at only sri lanka and develop this country there's enormous amount of opportunity so if you create a global citizen you need to have the right skills and the attitudes and the values for you to go to the world and win that world like india has done and also a socially conscientious people because now we know the consumers are very much concerned about environment people are concerned about um, ethics people are concerned about um, uh, gender there are so many factors that you consider when you try to consume these days so we need to create a society that goes with the demands of the world and when you talk about the government there are few things that we would consider very effectively i mean government is again a organization that serves purpose uh, uh, serves consumers right all of us are consumers of the government so if we want efficient service we need to have the government should have kpis what are your consumer deliverables what is the speed you want to deliver what is the efficiency you want to deliver what is the cost per service there should be kpis for all these government institutions and we have to establish those kpis and drive it 
for the effective government services. And the digitization and transparency has to come in. It will be tough at the initial stage, but we will have to bring in because if you don't digitize, the efficiency cannot be derived. And also with the digitization, you can bring transparency, which can eliminate corruption for good. And again, rule of law, right? So if you don't have, if you are not implementing your law or the constitution in the country, where is the safety for the government servants? They are, all their hands are tight. Right? They can't actually do what they're supposed to do because they don't have protection. So we need to establish rule of law before we establish efficiency in the, the government sector. The last piece about this area is the independent of the government service. As politicians, as aspired politicians who are also here, we will not intervene in decision making. We should not. We have a vision, we are a management team, we will ensure we manage and the particular department and the experts who are in that, the professionals will take decisions. Currently what happens is every decision that every department want to make or policy chain that they want to make, the politician gets involved because his interest, the conflict of interest is so high that we have created this crisis for our country. So lastly, the last pillar is about the international trade and how do we deal with the world. So we do need a strong foreign service. Do you think we have strong foreign service? Right? So do you think that they will go and try to win markets for us? Do you think they try to get, go and bring technology for us? Do you think they will create inroads for our SMEs to go into those markets? No, they don't do any of those. But our foreign delegates from Jatika Janabalavegia, we will give them the KPIs and if they don't achieve it, we will bring them down. That's how we will govern that service. And also, the concerns about being aligned to China, being aligned to India, being aligned to USA, whatever, what not, we want to have a non-aligned bilateral ties. These bilateral ties should be based on merits and competencies. As Sri Lanka, we have competencies, India has competencies, we have to come into a place where both parties are benefited and we should not be aligned and we don't have a policy that's aligned to either of those countries. And the trade, trade agreements for new markets, we have penetrated enough the western market and the western market is also falling in one way and also saturated in another way. But there are emerging markets like Africa, India, East Asia which we have not done anything over the last 20 years where our corporates on their own trying to bridge those markets. I think it's absolutely difficult if you even think of going to India. And in the ease of doing business I think this has been discussed many places but I think nothing has happened. So ease of doing business again comes into integrity and honesty of the governance, right? If we can establish the right structures, right policies and allow that to happen, organizations both locally and internationally will be able to uh, uh, do their business at ease. Again, it will create democracy for uh, doing business because you don't need government connection, you don't need to call your mayors or you know your politicians to get things done. And again, on the fifth one is the focus on the FDIs. Who would invest in a place when there's no plan? Which investor would come into a country if you ask the president of that country, what is your plan? We will tell, we will take this industry here, this is 10 year plan, this is a human resource plan, this is the infrastructure plan, you can come and invest. We will tell, this is how we will take agriculture. This is how we will take the apparel industry into more of a modern apparel industry where value addition is taken place for design and development and come and invest in this. Come and invest in our education in terms of bringing those education that we can take this country to different places because we know what we need. And the, as we see the last 20, 10 years, we only got about 10 uh, 10 billion worth of foreign direct investments where Vietnam got 13 billion on a single year. So everything, all these economic policies are cool, but it's still that you need good governance to ensure these are in place. And lastly, what I want to tell you is all these components are negotiable. We can discuss what we need to do, right? And the policy framework that we presented today can get detailed out 
each into industry, what is our fiscal policy, what is our monetary policy, what is our foreign policy, we'll detail it out by the general election so that people can vote on a principle and a policy that's going to last for next five to ten years. So, as Jataka Janabalavege, we invite you to understand us, talk to us, don't talk, don't listen to people who interpret us without talking to us. We have absolute clarity on what we want to do and we are very keen that with you all we can do it because it's you who has to build this country. We will give the guidance, we will give the vision, we will give the facilitation, we will give the support that's required for Sri Lankan private sector to boom and take this country to great heights for my children and their children. Thank you. मैं राठव विनाश कर लेती हूँ ना आपे वैरदी प्रतिपाति निशा ये वैरदी प्रतिपाति क्रियात्मक क्रिय मनिशा ये ये क्रियात्मक क्रिय में पालवी पाक या तमाय में वार्तमान आर्थिक आदेबुद्धि तापी बुक्ति भी नहीं ये कहीं इंदा मैं कहीं बहर वेन नॉन एक अटे ये यहाँ पर प्रतिपाति क्रिया कराना पुल मैं लंका भी ऐवनी ना है का परापुरक मैं अध्यक्षीम सामग्र भी वे ही किया ला ये का भी करी में बागे की मत ये नहीं मेरे राठे जनता आवटे मैं जनरा जनता आवटे ये सीलू में ना है को ऐतक अताकल ला क्रियावाय कतावाय देखा मैं कभी इन्होंन पलदाई बिंदो ने लंका वे विशाल आर्थिक एक नहीं कुड़ा आर्थिक क्या के तो वटा दंग हम्मत है ना दीमा आपी बैठीचे बैठीचे तंग वाली ना आपी बहुत मिक्मन टा गुड़े भी लती है ना इतने में वागे में में करप्शन लेवल लेकर वैदी वेला है हम्मत दीम मत बिलत तभी हम किसी भी देख टा में सुना गेट लती ना तेरे हम्मन है तो में करप्शन लेवल लेकर नत्रमन मंगी तो नहीं मैं इच्छा मारू है नहीं कहने मैं बिजनेसमैन के नेक्टर मैं आर्थिक एक एक का साब आगे बैं। हम अपने उत्तर के विशास के में देखते हैं राठे का आयोजन करना ना अनिवार्य में ये राठे का एक इंग यहाँ पता पिंडो आये पता गिरवाना इतनी आप इच्छा नहीं होना मर में टैक्स का केवल तो एक ना मैं लंका आए थे कराने पुरवान ना अन्य इधर टा मामा की तरह गोड़ा की इन्वेस्टर्स ला लंका आए किसी में बाया नहीं थी वो आयोजन ने कराने इन्वेस्ट कराने एक सुनो लेटर सामुदायिक चेंज इस सिचुएशन इन श्रीलंका गुड लक श्रीलंका थैंक यू